I just wanted to, uh, to share with you guys if you want to full screen it. Hold on, let me just make sure. I'm... Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Okay, so this is just uh, oh, something I put together here. It's the top 10 youngest Grand Prix winners. And I plotted uh, the age uh, that, they, uh, that they won their first Grand Prix uh, <laughs> against the year when it happened here. Um, but ignore like the, that red line over there for now. Um, but what's going on here is a distribution from 10 all the way up to first. First, uh, of course. But let, let, let's go through the list, though, to see like what this brings. So l starting from the oldest in that list of top 10, let's go right now. A bit of a zoom in so you can see it a little better. There it is. from And from the beginning of the championship even uh, till now. And we go to number 10. And the 10th youngest one in F1 was Michael Schumacher. 23 years, 240 days in the 1992 Belgian Grand Prix. Look at him there. How young oh, does wow. he look? Like just in that, uh, in that Benetton, that, that was basically what started the Michael Schumacher euphoria in Germany. So now moving to the next in the list, number nine. Um, from Belgium, Jackie X. Back in the day, in the 1968 French Grand Prix, full of water, as, as was Michael Schumacher's first victory, it was a wet rain. Wet, and everybody knows that Michael Schumacher like, was known as like, a, being a, a bit of an expert. He made a difference in the rain he, as, as a young driver, taking mm -hmm. the risks, putting the car where you had to. Jackie X, for that time, for this era in the Formula 1, 23 years, 188 days, in 1968, in a very, very wet track of Rouen, look at that. There he is, thrashing the Ferrari around. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 he, and he had his victory. And then he moved on to have a pretty successful career uh, in sportsman. I think he won Le Mans. He never won a an F1 championship, but he was, he was, a, he was good. Mm. Uh, like, like Kimi Raikkonen, good, I'd say. Okay. Um, uh, Jackie X, again, made history. Number eight. Now, further down our, our list, a name that I'm that you're only vaguely familiar with now, Robert Kubica. He was like, he was around in F1 a little while ago. Uh, he won in the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. I believe there was, it, it was another bit of a wet race. <laughs> um, Didn't he also almost die there? Uh, no, actually, he had a big crash yeah. um, a bit later on that. Kind of yeah. ruined his well, career. Well, not the same year, but... Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah late, later in his career. Yeah, I'm now... A, I remember that. Number seven. Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, wow. Look at a young Kimi. Back when he used to smile. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 23 years, 157 days. He won the, uh, the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix driving for McLaren. Back in the days of people... Like, this is the era that people remember Raikkonen in, in, in like his full glory. They, some say right. that Raikkonen has never been as fast as he was here or as uh, much of a competent driver. Um, going to number six now. Who else but my champion, our champion, <laughs> at 22, 22 years, 154 days, at, 2007, at the 2007 Canadian Grand Prix, look at him being double teamed in Champagne there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why a lot of people say that he loves coming to Canada. It's because, because he had his first, his, his first victory there. Wow. It's, it's, he's very emotional about Canada. He actually definitely does uh, like to come to Montreal mm -hmm. to race. Oh, one of the colonies. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now to number five. Uh, you can tell by the color blue. These are older guys. So Bruce McLaren. Oh, wow. The Bruce McLaren at 22 years. In 1959, he was very young. He was a, a very young from New Zealand. He went to Britain. He eventually started his team that is the McLaren team today. He has some success. Number four, <laughs> this one is the one that I'm not I'm not so sure. This is a guy called Troy Rutman um, that he won the 1952 Indianapolis 500. He mostly raced in America. He only took part in F1 races, like maybe like two or three F1 races mm -hmm. or something like that. But he won the Indy 500 and the Indy 500 and that in those days was counted as for points for the f1 world championship oh, but wow. but hardly anybody like any of the Europe european teams bothered uh, going, going to indianapolis okay. like sometimes not even ferrari showed up <laughs> anyway but now we're going back we're, we're going down to like the little number so number three <coughs> number three in this youngest list who else but el nano right there <laughs> and there he is in 2003 in the hungarian grand prix 22 years 26 days 
Getting, we're getting, we're getting closer. And there he goes. And then the previous record keeper, of course, was Sebastian Vettel. Vettel. The first appearance of Il Dito. <laughs> <laughs> there he is in his Toro Rosso Finger. uniform. It was he wasn't yeah. racing for Red Bull. He was a Toro Rosso guy. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in Italy, another wet race. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And then, of course, down to number one, we have Max, the new guy. <laughs> there he is. Now, a couple of things that are that are interesting to note with this with this chart. I I sort of looked at it here, and like it's it, it's it's very easy to see that a pattern emerges, especially when you don't count these. Look at what happened these two years now, from the seventies to the nineties. There's twenty years that there was. Nothing really going on in terms of no uh, children allowed. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> um, and this, uh, curiously enough, this is, you know, when when uh, um, Rush the movie like the, the story happened here. Yeah. Gilles Villeneuve is here. These are these are the golden days of F one, right? Um, and, and they and were the golden days. Of F1. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and this is a reason why maybe uh, people like Bernie and 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 the older statements uh, is the older statement of the sport. Are saying like you know we should go back to these days where there were no kids in the track whatever right you know some <laughs> you know who's the get 17 the, year old kids off the track <laughs> but but look you can see there were and and these were like you know the hard days when the cars got ridiculous they first started to get like like really really crazy with the aerodynamics right. ground effects a lot of downforce you, you saw some amazing racing there but yeah. when we met with um with tim horani remember he's he he said something like yeah, man those cars like the thing is that Max Verstappen, as, as much as his skill is, as much as he has skill and every right to his seat and, and whatever, he probably wouldn't have been able to had to like really manhandle the cars of this era. <laughs> Not to take anything away from him. Uh, but anyway, just so I, I found it pretty that's, interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting note. Um, of this, I wanted to say that definitely like these two guys, when they were youngest drivers that got a, a, a youngest... Uh, you know they're in the top ten of youngest guys that that won a Grand Prix and then they went on to like have successful careers after him. I'm not so sure. I don't really want to count him because it was just the Indi yeah, right it, it was just Indianapolis. <laughs> but you know, but these two though, when when looking at the big picture, you can count them as outliers, mm -hmm. right? Like they're way over here. You can see though that on this side from the '90s onwards, it it does form a little bit of a pattern right. that these drivers that are completing like that that are getting their that have been the youngest uh to complete a grand prix it's getting it's getting younger it's getting younger as the time progresses and it does seem to follow at least a bit of a pattern there's a trend line that i that i added there I very brusquely added there mm -hmm. in, in in light red uh, for our listeners uh this uh this presentation will be available if you want to check it out just the presentation uh it will be in the links in the commentary in the comments anyway but um <laughs> Dr. Andrew Phillips of F1 Metrics would probably not approve of that trend line, but <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, it, it does seem to follow up. But now let's go back again and, 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 and review these names. So again, that's we're talking about Schumacher, Kubica, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, and Verstappen, mm -hmm. right? Out of this list, look at it right now, most of, well, a few, quite, most of them are still in it. Well, are, are in F one except for Kubica and Michael Schumacher. Mm -hmm. um, but these guys, Michael Schumacher, multiple world champion, Raikkonen, world champion, Alonso, double world, world champion, Hamilton, triple, triple world champion, wow. Vettel, quadruple. quadruple world champion. We will never know. We're gonna see a quintuple Verstappen. We will Alonso. never know what Kubica would have done. And Bakubica was one of those names that I remember, like, back before his accident. So what happened is that he had a very promising F1 career ahead of him. People were basically, like, making as much hype of him as people have been about Hamilton. Uh, the, mm -hmm. There was a huge interest from Poland. He's, Pol he's, he's, he's Polish. But then uh, in the offseason or, or at one point, he actually went and raced a rally. And Ooh. he got into a huge accident. Uh -oh. And after that, he couldn't recover. And his career uh, in F1 was doomed. So we will never know what Kubica could have achieved. But he was definitely in the path. And looking at this line, you can't help but see that Verstappen, he's, he's been doing the right things. For sure. Uh, like he's, 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 yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely in line. It's, it's not 
so he's 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 joined a very exclusive group that everybody pretty much it's at least since the 90s any any driver that did their first uh or th that had the youngest grand prix victory went on to win a, ch a championship except for kubica but we'll never know right? oh man right so this it's fantastic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now though i do have to say that looking at this th th there is another thing that that i do want to point out and it's that that line there uh that i just added right around oh shit mike check out your camera sorry sorry guys good okay good. yeah Yo. um because this green line represents an introduction and now and now this is where i get when i when i start to get cynical because uh -oh. clearly there's a pattern there yeah. right <sighs> this that green line from just before 1990 and just after 1990 the first couple of years a couple of years before and a couple of years after coincides with the introduction of two key things that we still have today in f1 the semi-automatic and automatic gearboxes with the flappy paddles mm -hmm. and power steering uh... two key things that in a way moved it away from being this this era of the great gladiators that right. that, that that used to have to man how handle the car um and 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 gave room to the smooth drivers to the guys that could you know, finesse the corners in, right. in 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 a way so i did find that very interesting um it may be i mean as whereas for sure nothing can be taken away from what what, Versa what verstappen has done mm -hmm. it, we shouldn't honestly get carried away 100 percent by saying you know what this is a uh, the next coming of christ or any or anything like that right it is i think in a way um a symptom of the times right um a symptom of that there there there, that, there was definitely a a change in the way that the requirements of you as a driver yeah, well, before good, good for him and all that but i'm not gonna start cheering for him i'm not a fan all of a sudden yeah <laughs> no but. just i, I just want to like to to point that this definitely made me like just just to try to keep things in perspective mm -hmm. um and i think that mm -hmm. if with enough time like maybe somebody will break that record even if regulations get like that because maybe that's what you need to win these days and if you if you look because what comes with youth mm. right with youth comes that feeling that you can pretty much get away with anything because you're not tied to anything right you got you got you got you got nothing to lose, so why not try it? Why not go for night for that gap? Why not um, engage in the you know have that youthful impetus? And if the car is maybe less physical to drive, then the skills that like will make you the winner, given the right car, is that is you know, on top of like you know you start with the with a basis of talent and of good racecraft and all that and all the things that you learn through karting, but the the last step would be to having to have that 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 enthusiasm that that energy and that right. not giving a fuck to go for the, for that gap and and and, yeah. and to not be stressed yeah. to not have things tying you down like family like kids like res other responsibilities right. life and, in general yeah like yeah, life doesn't get when life doesn't get in the way of your driving mm -hmm. and that's all you need to win grand prix and to be great is to not crack under pressure but it's probably a little bit easier to do that if you don't have a kid. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, then it only makes sense that it's a young man's game now. Mm. That that's just what F one is these days. Yeah. But you would, I, I would say, you would want that. But but it, from uh, from uh, getting fans into a sport, do you want? Do you, whether you want it or not, really, then it it all becomes like the question of the age right now. It all goes back.